evangelize comes from the Greek word evangelion, which is simply the Greek translation of bisor, bisora, let us say, to preach the gospel. That is to preach the good news. Paul tells Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Now he's speaking to him as an apostle and an older experienced pastor, encouraging and providing guidance and instruction to a younger pastor. But he tells him, do the work of an evangelist. We don't all have the gift of teaching. Some do, some don't. And we're warned in James that those who have the gift of teaching will be judged more strictly than the rest. We don't all have the gift of teaching. But who is going to say, well, I don't have the gift of teaching, therefore I'm not going to read the scriptures. I'm just going to go to church and let a pastor explain it to me. That would be completely wrong. The devotional reading of the Word of God for yourself is as essential to listening to sermons or going to Bible studies. We have crushed grain and whole grain. Nobody who has their head on straight as a Christian would say, I'm not going to read God's Word because I don't have the gift of teaching. I just don't understand it as well as a pastor or a theologian. Evangelism is no different. Somebody who's a Christian father and husband cannot say, I'm not going to worry about being the shepherd of my own family spiritually. I'm not going to worry about being the spiritual head of my marriage and my family because I'm not called to be a pastor. That's ridiculous. The husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. The first and foremost responsibility for the spiritual welfare of a man's wife and children is not the pastor, it's him before the Lord. Evangelism is no different. No, we are not all evangelists, but we are all witnesses. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In Daniel, the wise man delivers souls. What is the difference? An evangelist fishes with a net. He can stand up on a platform, a pulpit, a public podium, a street corner, preach the gospel to larger groups of people and engage collective or corporate groups of people. Maybe even see people respond. I'm not talking about the decisions game, but certainly preaching the gospel charismatically, from the Greek word kerygma, as Peter did on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2. This is an evangelist. An evangelist fishes with a net. They present the gospel to larger groups of people. Not only that, but they tend to interpret their entire Christian experience in light of seeing souls saved because the Holy Spirit has put the burden of Christ for the lost on their shoulders. They carry a burden for the salvation of souls that comes from the Holy Spirit. That's not to say we should not all want to see souls saved, but with an evangelist, it's like being a policeman in New York City or Chicago. Even when you're off duty, you're still on duty 24-7. Evangelists have that character. <clears throat> they fish with a net and with a pole. But then there's people who are not evangelists. They only fish with a pole. They only fish with a fishing rod. 
God does not expect them to stand up and preach the gospel to large groups of people. If they're not called to do that, the Holy Spirit has not anointed them to do it. Now, if it is only fear stopping them, that's something that God needs to deal with. They shouldn't be afraid to open their mouths. I think there are people who are evangelists who don't know they're evangelists. In fact, I'm sure there are. Nonetheless, every one of us, even if we do not have the gift of evangelism, can fish with a pole. There is no saved Christian from day one, just like the woman at the well when she first met Jesus, who cannot give their testimony, who cannot knock on a door and invite someone to church or hand out a tract. Go Christmas caroling, pass out pamphlets, inviting people to church to hear the gospel at Christmas. Going out on a team, putting invitations to church on the doors. Knock on the door a week later. We put one of these under your door. Can you possibly join us on Sunday? We'd love to have you. Witnessing the people who we know from our day-to-day -day relationships. There is nobody who can't pass out tracts, give their testimony, or have a conversation and witness one on one. We can all fish with a pole, with a rod. And there are skills, just like angling and tackling. You learn what bait to use for different people. Evangelism is like anything else. You don't witness to a Catholic the way you witness to a Muslim, and you do not witness to a Muslim the way you do to a Darwinist, or a Darwinist the way you do to a New Ager, or a New Ager the way you do to a Jew. <clears throat> you learn these things. The Lord will teach you through experience and through scripture. One book people should read, all people, is a classic called The Master's Plan of Evangelism, an excellent book I would recommend to anybody. Every church should have that book available and encourage its reading. Nonetheless, Maybe you are an evangelist, maybe you're not. But even if you're not, the Lord has called you to do the work of an evangelist. Nobody expects you to stand up on a platform or a pulpit and preach the gospel to a large group of people if that is not your gift. But God does expect you to share your faith, to actively witness to go witnessing. And today we have new modalities of doing it through blog sites, through the internet. There are people who say things like, it's not really my gift. That just becomes an excuse not to do it. Or there are people who say, well, if somebody asks me, I'll tell them. Well, I certainly hope so, but that's not going out to the highways and byways. There are those who say all kinds of things. I'll just be a witness. Well, before we can witness, we have to be one, or at least we should be. That is a half-truth, a half-truth. What we also need to remember is, as we always point out, Jesus never said to make converts. He said, make disciples. When we lead somebody to Christ, the first step of discipleship is believer's baptism and getting them into a good fellowship to learn the word of God. You feed a newborn baby milk. Satan will come after that new creation, just like the parable of the sower. He'll send the Jehovah's Witnesses to their door two days later. They have to be looked after. Get them into fellowship. But it begins by opening our own mouth. 
Maybe you are an evangelist, perhaps you are not. But you are a witness, and the Lord expects us, me, you, to witness. Now, he expects more evangelistically from an evangelist. That is true. But he does not expect less from any of us than fishing with a pole with a rod. Evangelists fish with a net. Even if you're not an evangelist, you get yourself a good fishing rod. You pray and you go fishing. The time is short. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you for listening. God bless. Thank you, Jacob. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Parpezzo, Parpezzo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.